Hello, hello, hello. And welcome to Faith Manifest with Andrea. We're going to dive into the word again today. We're going to look at Judges 7. Watch God do it. Subtitle might even be, Not everyone is ready for the battle. Concepts we will see. Gideon assembles the warriors for battle. God said there are too many with you. You would think that you won the battle by your own by your own strength, your own might. And God decreases them from 32,000 soldiers to war to 300. And a lot of who was determined who was ready for war, it was based on their stance when taken in water. I think this will show in their spiritual strength, their battle readiness. And we'll talk about this a little bit when we get to it. We we'll also see that God gives the enemy dreams about the battle. God will let your enemy know who you are. And your God will give you, our God will give you words of encouragement for your battle. He will give you words of encouragement to strengthen you, encourage you. And prepare you for the battle. And we're going to look at blowing the shofar and watching God do it. Watch the enemy be confounded, confused, scattered. Questions to ponder. Am I prepared for battle? Do I trust God to fight for me? Our affirmations. God is our God and we are his people. I am prepared for battle and have the victory. God fights for me. And no enemy can stand before me. <clears throat> Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the day. We thank you for your love, your grace, and for your mercy. We thank you for this moment in time because through which your power and glory are being shown. Father God, less of me and more of you. Let me speak as an oracle of God and not my thoughts, words, and opinions, but your own. Less of me, more of you. Send fresh anointing for today. Send fresh anointing for this word. Send your fire from heaven that I will speak a word that will glorify you that will build your people, that will edify your people, that will give a deeper understanding, deeper revelation, deeper knowledge of you, deeper relationship. Bless the viewer, bless the subscriber on today, binding the devil, demon, with your wallet that will come against them and their family, me and my family. Arise, O God, and let your enemies be scattered. Let those that hate you flee before you. Go before this YouTube channel, go before this video. Go before this word. Go before your people. Who can stand before you, Lord? No one. No one. You are our God and we're your people and that settles it all. And we say thank you, Father God. And I want to pray Psalm 97, the Lord's power over and dominion. Father, you reign. Let the earth rejoice. Let many islands and coastlands be glad. Let clouds and thick darkness surround you as at Mount Sinai. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Fire goes before you and burns up our adversaries on all sides. Your lightnings have illuminated the world. The earth has seen and trembled. The mountains melted like a wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare your righteousness and all the people shall see your glory and brilliance. Yes, Lord, let all those be deeply ashamed who serve carved images, who boast in idols, worship him, all you gods. Zion heard this and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of your judgments, O God, for you are the Lord most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You who love the Lord hate evil. He protects the souls of his godly ones. Father God, you protect our souls. You rescue us from the hand of the wicked. Light is sown like seed for the righteous and illuminates their path. Illuminate our path on today, Lord. And irrepressible joy is spread for the upright in heart. 
who delights in your favor and protection, Lord. Give us irrepressible joy today, Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous ones, those who have moral and spiritual integrity. This places you in right standing with God. Rejoice in him, O God, and praise and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're going to go into the word on today. We're at Gen uh, uh, Judges chapter 7. And we saw on yesterday that the Israelites were being attacked by the Midianites. And the Midianites were taking everything that they had, leaving them nothing. They even had to hide in caves. They had to um, do unnatural things or unregular, you know, un not normal things to hide their harvest so the enemy wouldn't take it. And God comes to Gideon. He raises up Gideon. And Gideon says, why are we going through these things? You said you would be with us. Why are we going through these things? And I told you on yesterday, you could ask God why you're going through what you're going through. And God showed him, y'all have an evil altar here. You have an altar where you're communicating with demons. Why would I want to be here? Why would I want to bless you? You've broken my covenant. And God had Gideon tear down the evil altar. He had Gideon build a new God altar. And now he's sending Gideon into battle. And we saw one yesterday. Gideon said, well, if you want me to go to battle, Lord, you know, he asked God some specific things. And God answered specifically. And he says, well, I'm going to put this wool on the ground. And if the wool is wet and the ground is dry, I'll go. God did it. And then he says, well, I'm going to put this wool on the ground again. And if the ground is wet and the wool is dry, I'll go. And God did it. Why well, we keep testing God? And so now we're at the battle. Sometimes we have to see, are we battle ready? Gideon asked God several times, are you sure, Lord, you want to send me? And God says, yes, Gideon, I want to send you. I've asked God several times, are you sure, Lord, you want to send me? And he said, yes, Andrea, I want to send you. So let's go into Judges 7 and see how this plays out. So remember, Gideon's father changed his name to Jerubbabel. So it says, then Jerubbabel, that is Gideon, and all the people who were with him got up early and camped beside the spring of Herod, and the camp of Midian was north of them by the hill of Moray in the valley. A lot of times you'll see when they're going into battle, they got up early. Are you getting up early in the morning, praying, talking to God, letting him start your day, calling your day into, into play? Then the Lord said to Gideon, there are too many people with you for me to hand over Midian to them. Otherwise, Israel will boast about themselves against me saying, my own power has rescued me. So God tells Gideon, he's like, you got a lot of people with you and y'all are going to win the battle and you're going to think it's because of the number of people that's with you while you won this battle. No, I'm going to do it in a way that I get the glory. Y'all often hear me talk about, you know, my husband and him recovering. And there was a lot of people that started out on this battle with us. A lot of people that started out on this journey. When he first got sick, oh my God, there was two waiting rooms full of people. But now that it's been three years later, sometimes even the visitors are few and far in, in between. God says, because when I do what I do, I don't want anybody else to take the glory. So God tells Gideon, you got too many people with you. Sometimes what you're going through in life, you're going to see people start falling by the wayside. Why? God is telling saying you got too many people with you for this battle. Some of them not ready. They might slow you down. They might delay you. They might make you turn back. You got too many people with you. At first, we got we get upset. I was upset when one by one people started dropping off from us. But like God told, like God told Gideon, you got too many people with you. 
So don't get upset as you're going into battles, as you're going through things that you don't have as many people as you used to. You don't have as many friends with you that you used to have. It's okay because trust and believe the ones that are standing with you, they're going to be the ones that are about it, about it, as the, as the young people say. Okay? So now proclaiming the hearing of the people, whoever is afraid and trembling, let them turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men returned home, but 10,000 remained. Can you imagine going into war and you're scared and you're trembling? And then the man makes the announcement, hey, anybody that's not sure about this, you can turn back and go back home. And it says 22,000 people left them. Not everybody has the faith that you have. Not everybody can walk the journey that you're walking. Don't get upset if they turn back and go back home. Maybe what once you come out of your situation, that might encourage them. But don't let it stop you. Don't let it deter you. Don't let it make you turn back. Maybe those 22,000 people that went back might have would have got into the battle and, and did something wrong to cause them to lose the battle. Okay? Then the Lord said to Gideon, there are still too many people. I know Gideon is like, God, are you serious? I'm down to 10,000 men. The armies that we're fighting is more than almost like the sand on the, on the beach. And you're going to say it's, you're saying it's too many? God might dwindle down the people in your circle. You got to think about it, y'all. Jesus had 12 disciples. But the ones that went into real battle with him, the ones that he showed the most to, it was only three. Okay? There's your circle, and then there's your inner circle. Who's in your inner circle that you can really count on to fight with you? Then the Lord said to Gideon, there are still too many people. Bring them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. Therefore, it shall be that he of whom I say to you, this one shall go with you. He shall go with you. But everyone of whom I say to you, this one shall not go with you. He shall not go. God is wanting to separate us from some people, but we're still trying to hold on. We're still trying to take them with us when God says, no, I'm going to do the separating. This one I'm going to say can go with you and this one not today. As you're going through your situation, as you're going into your battle, God is going to put who will stand with you in your situation, who will fight with you, and then he's going to move some people. Don't get upset. Let God do the separating. <coughs> Excuse me. Then the Lord, oh, sorry, I read that. So he brought the people down to the water, and the Lord said to Gideon, you shall separate everyone who laps the water with his tongue as a dog laps, as well as everyone who kneels down to drink. Now the number of those who lap the water, putting their hand to their mouth, with 300 people, but all the rest of the people kneel down to drink water. Not everybody was ready. How could that be a test, Andrea? Because when you're going into battle, you need to be aware of your surroundings. You need to be looking at who's with you, who's aiming at you, who's shooting at you. So the people that cup the water and bring it up, they could still be looking around to see who was in attack mode against them. But the people that bent over and they were licking the water up, their eyes were on the water. Their eyes were still on the flesh. Uh-oh. This word is truth, y'all. Their eyes were still on the flesh and the surroundings. They weren't taking the battle seriously. Because if you're going into a battle against all these people, who has time to, to, time to bend down, drink the water, and not look around at all at their surroundings? So the ones that took the water up they thought the water was precious and was going to give them nourishment, but also give them ability to still look around and see if there was any enemies as they took their water to drink. God is wise, y'all. And sometimes the people that you would think shouldn't be there fighting with you are the ones that God says, no, this is the one. They're ready. They're, they're attuned. They're in the spiritual realm. They're looking. God is awesome. And the Lord said to Gideon, with these 300 men who lapped, I will rescue you and will hand over the Midianites to you. Let all the other people go 
home, each man to his own home. So the 300 men took people, pro, people's provisions for the journey and their trumpets, their shofars. I love the shofar. In their hands and Gideon sent away all the other men of Israel, each to his tent. But he kept the 300 men. And the camp of Midian was below him in the valley. God took him from 32,000 people to 300. God says, when I do this, when I do what I do, you're going to know it was me fighting for you. I love it. And then I love it. Then once he got the ones in order, they gave them what they need for the battle. Do you have what you need for the battle? Do you have your fasting, your praying, your praise, your worship? Your shofar, do you know how to blow the shofar or play the shofar in your house? They took their weapons and then they went. And I love it. It says the enemy was in the valley below them. So that's the, what it tells me. They're in the spiritual realm. They're above their enemy. Have you ascended? Have you gotten to the spiritual realm above your enemy? Now on the same night, the Lord, I love this y'all, said to the Gideon, Arise, go down against their camp, for I have given it into your hand. But if you are afraid to go down by yourself, go with Pura, your servant, down to the camp. God always makes a way for us, y'all. Like, even if we may be nervous to move into the callings and things that he says for us, he'll, he'll send the right person, or he'll send someone that maybe give us a little bit more backbone. You know, everybody has that friend that, like, I'm... um. I don't know, can I say I'm a little bit reserved? I'm bold at times when it needs when I need to be, but I, I'm a, I'm reserved sometimes. I'm getting over the shy thing, but I have some friends that are in my. Uh, I have some friends that if if I post something on Facebook and and somebody says something wrong to me, they'll be like Peter. You know, I'm gonna get the sword and I'm gonna cut their ear off. <laughs> so God will prepare you up with the people. You know what I'm saying? That might give you the words of encouragement. You're inspiring them, and then they're there to encourage you as well. So he says, if you're afraid, I'll let you go with Pura. And you will hear what they say, and afterward, you will have the courage to go down against the camp. Then he went down with Pura, his servant, to the outpost of the army that was in the camp. Okay, Andrew, well, what are you telling me? You need to be monitoring your enemy. You need to be knowing who's your enemy. You need to know their ins and outs. Because trust and believe your enemy knows your ins and outs and he's monitoring you. So how dare you not study your enemy? So he went down to the camp to see about his enemy. Uh-oh. I always say, you can't fight properly what you don't know you're fighting. So how can you fight a witch if you don't know you're fighting a witch? How can you fight a demon if you don't know you're fighting a demon? How can you fight a jealous person if you don't know what you're fighting? You're just going through things, but you don't know if somebody's speaking curses against your life. Whatever you're going through, you need to ask God, Lord, is it something I've done, my ancestors, my forefathers have done? Is it an enemy? Is it something you want to teach me? And then when, once God shows you, then you start to attack it, and you let God teach you which way to fight. So now the Midianites and Amalekites and all the sons of the east were lying camped in the valley as countless as locusts. You couldn't even count them. And if you ever seen when locusts fly in, you know, you can you YouTube or Google um, a, a, a locust invasion. Y'all, it's thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of locusts. You can't even see the ground. They'll, they'll come and land on plants. And once they pick up, there's nothing left. And this is how many of their enemies were down there. And their camels were without number, as numerous as the sand on the seashore. How are you going to fight 300? Uh, uh, how are 300 people going to fight an enemy that's more numerous than the seashore? Because if they had camels as numerous as the sand on the seashore, that means they had to have had a person on each camel. Whoa. And now we may not be fighting physical people, but demons, y'all, spiritual things. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. What does the Bible tell us? When Gideon arrived, there was a man telling a dream to his friend. And he said, listen carefully. And I keep telling y'all, God speaks to us in our dreams. 
He'll warn your enemy about you. He'll tell your enemy who you are. So if they decide to still attack you, that's their foolishness. Trust and believe anybody that's coming against you, a witch, warlock, or whoever, they have had a dream about you. And trust and believe you probably had a dream about them. And the man said, listen carefully. I had a dream. There was a loaf of barley bread tumbling into the camp of the of Midian. And it came to the tent. And when it hit the tent, the tent fell. And it turned it upside down so the tent lay flat. He said his little barley bread, his little nothing, came into the camp. It rolled in. And when it touched the tent, the tent collapsed. God was showing them that the barley bread was the Israelites that was their little 300 men that was not nothing compared to this mighty army this mighty tent but yet when that barley loaf that bread touched that tent it collapsed it fell and his friend replied this dream is nothing less than the sword of Gideon the son of Joash a man of Israel God has given Midian and the entire camp into his hand now my thing is this they had the dream they had the interpretation. Why did they still go to that battle? There are some very foolish enemies of yours. They just want to get the upper hand. They just want to still try it. But when they fight against God, that's a losing battle. They had the dream. They had the interpretation. Why did they still go to battle? And when Gideon heard the account of the dream and his interpretation, he bowed down and worshiped. Do you worship God? Have you worshiped God? Have you thanked him for the battle that you're in and for the victory he's giving you? Then he returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has given the camp of Midian into your hands. I went walking today and I was doing my two-mile mile walk. And as I was walking, I was just thinking of things and I was talking to God. I always talk to God when I walk. And as I was talking to him and I was thinking to myself like, I don't cry like I used to. I don't stress like I used to. I don't. There was like, there was like, I had like an aha moment. Like I had a reality check or I had an evaluation moment. And God said, yeah, you're on the, you're on the coming out side of the, of the journey. And I said, coming out. And he says, yes. My pastor, Bishop Thomas always says, you're either going into a storm, going through a storm, or coming out of a storm. You have to see which part of the journey you're on. When you're going into the storm, y'all, you start seeing the clouds, you start seeing the waves. It's probably giving you, it's probably giving you a little bit of fear, but you don't really know exactly how to how to yet really interact because you haven't really seen the full force of the storm. So you're a little bit nervous and so you're getting prepared. You should be getting prepared. And then you get full blast going through the storm. And it's the waves that's about to tear your boat apart. It's the lightning. It's the, the, the thunder. It's the grace clouds. It's the, you can't even see the sun. You can't even see the sky for the clouds are so thick. And sometimes you don't think you're going to even make it through the storm. The waves and everything is churning. And then you get to the phase when you get past the storm, you're coming out of the storm. And you can see the storm behind you. And you can see all that you came through. And then when you look ahead, you can see the sunshine coming through the clouds. You might even see a rainbow that's saying, you know, God is saying, I told you I wouldn't destroy you. I told you the promises I've spoken of your life will be fulfilled. You might can even hear the birds chirping. And then there's a peace that you're seeing on the water. You don't see the rocking and the turmoil of the waves anymore. There's just a, a rock that you're going with. And God says you're on that side of the journey. And I needed that today because that was a word of encouragement. So like Gideon, he went into the enemy's camp. And it's like God was telling him, you're, you're already on the other side of the journey. Probably whenever he, whenever he was in the wine press, pressing the, the wheat, 
in the wine press in a place he wasn't supposed to be. That was him going into the storm. Then when he tore down the evil altar and the people in his town and his family wanted to kill him, that was him in the midst of the storm. And you might even be thinking this big battle that he's about to go through is an even bigger storm. But it's like really he's on the way coming out because God's about to do everything for him. And God gave him a sign. And God will give you a sign. He'll let you know where you are in your storm. But you got to stay with him. You got to follow his lead. And so he bowed down and worship. Have you worshiped God today? Mm, Lord, I thank you. And he divided the 300 men into three companies. And he put trumpets and empty pitchers into the hands of all of them. With torches inside the pictures. Okay. <clears throat> and just to go back to the barley bread for a minute. Barley was the cheapest of the grain. And it probably represented the fact that Gideon's forces were small and unimpressive. Compared to the enemy they were fighting. Okay. So Gideon has 300 men. He's Blitz them into groups of 100. So three groups of 100. And he gives them all the same weapons. God has given us all the same weapons. Uh-oh. And he said to them, look at me and then do likewise. I was walking in the park yesterday. And, and what came to mind was if anybody saw the movie Black Panther... There was a army of women warriors, and they had that one woman warrior that I mean, she was fierce, she was tough, she was you know, tough, she was the bomb, as they say, right? But when you look behind her, all the women that were with her, they were just as fierce, they were just as rough, they were just as tough, they were just as skilled, and they were following her lead. So here is Gideon. He's rough and he's tough. Now God has, you know, gave, gave him his, you know, encouragement. And now he's training people behind him to do what he do and look like he look. And take the victory. And as I was walking yesterday, it's like God was saying, that's what you're doing with these YouTube channels. And that's what you're doing when you're praying and teaching other people how to pray and teach them about dreams and and the word of God, you're teaching them to be the warriors. Like one warrior, God said what? Can chase a thousand and two can chase 10,000. So yeah, me alone, I'm probably a fierce competition, right? But can you imagine what me and you together, warring together can do? Do you know the territory will take the kingdom of Satan that will tear down? The people will get set free, the people that'll get healed, the demons that'll get cast out. You and me together, warriors, going to war now. We know not everybody is ready. But as you're listening to these videos, as you're studying this word of God, as you're learning who your God is and who you are, he's getting you ready. He's building your faith so that when we go out together, y'all, I'm telling you, nothing but power, nothing but authority. Taking back what God says we're supposed to have. And he said to them, look at me and then do likewise. When I come to the edge of the camp, do just as I do. I can't tell you nothing to do that I'm not doing. We're doing a green smoothie challenge right now, a green smoothie detox right now. And as we're doing this detox and this cleanse, you know, I feel like I'm obligated to, do, to go over and beyond. Because why? I invited people onto this cleanse and... Uh, if I'm the leader of the group, then I got to show the the over and beyond efforts. I have a, another friend that me and her have like um, uh, 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 committed to daily checking in and, and exercising together or doing our mutual exercises separately. And not in competition, but if we're, if we're supposed to be leading the pack, then we got to go all in. So Gideon says, do what I do. So for you to be able to lead, you got to be able to take the front and show the people the way. So instead of doing two miles, sometimes I do four miles as I walk. You know, I'm trying to push a limit just to see what I can do 
as I eat healthy for my body, exercise for my body. And not just for my body, but God wants his healthy mind, body, and soul. So as I do things, I share with people what I do to keep my mind healthy, my body healthy, my soul healthy. So Gideon says, do what I do. Parents get in a lot of trouble sometimes because they'll tell kids, don't do this and don't do that. And then they'll tell them and the kids will come back and say, well, you do it. And the parents say, well, don't do as I do. Do as I say. That has no weight, no power. Leaders lead by example. So Gideon says, do what I do. I, I, was a, I am a nurse and was a nurse manager for many years. And no matter what position or role I had, if somebody called for a bedpan, if somebody put on a light, I would go in there. I would answer the light. I would put somebody on the bedpan. I would change somebody if I needed to. And I had more respect for my soldiers. I had more respect from those nurses and CNAs working with me because they saw me leading by example. And Gideon said, do, do like I do. And when I and I who are with me blow the trumpet, the ram's horn, the shofar, then all around the camp, you shall also blow the trumpet and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. What battles are you facing right now? Can you declare loudly, this battle is victorious for the Lord and for Andrea, for the Lord and for Corey, for the Lord and what's your name? What are you battling? Can you boldly proclaim this victory? I'm going out fighting for me and mine. Sometimes you need to put a name on, on what you're fighting for. Who are you fighting for? This is for the Lord and my marriage. This is for the Lord and my health. This is for the Lord and my finances. Do you know what you're fighting, who you're fighting for? And I love it, y'all. Verse 19. So Gideon and the hundred of men who were with him came to the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch when the guards had been changed and they blew the trumpets and smashed the pitchers that were in their hands. <coughs> Excuse me. So, they, they split up and they came at the middle watch. Well, what does that mean, Andrea? This was about 10 p.m. at night when most of the men in the camp would be sleeping. So, when you're in army uh, fighting times or territory, um, so that all the soldiers wouldn't be up, some soldiers would be resting. You would have some soldiers on guard. And there are, we call them prayer watches now, but there were watches where like every three hours, um, 9, 10, and 11, no, 9 to 10, 10, 11, 11, 12. So from 9 p.m. to 12 midnight, that was a watch. 12 midnight to 3 a.m., that was a watch. 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., that was a watch. 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., that was a watch, and so on, every three hours. So Gideon attacked during the time frame when the, the guards had been changed, a majority of the enemy was asleep. And that's when he came into the camp. So guess what? When are you doing your warfare? When are you doing your battle strategies against your enemy? Because one powerful prayer watch is also that 9 to 12 midnight time frame. And also the 12 midnight to 3 a.m. time frame. Why? Because the enemy comes and attacks you between 12 midnight and 3 a.m. Because while you're asleep. That's why you're waking up sometimes after having a nightmare. Or you wake up every day at 3 a.m. God is telling you you need to pray. Because the enemy is plotting some major things against you. So Gideon attacked the enemy when they were probably going to be most vulnerable. You need to start attacking your enemy. Let God show you those these different prayer watches that I just called out. You need to be praying. I set the alarm on my phone. Every three hours it rings. Whether I pray for five minutes, Lord, protect my family, the blood of Jesus, or whatever. I'm praying warfare prayers against my enemy. I'm praying for God's blessings, power, glory to be revealed in my life and the lives of those I pray for. Are you warring? Are you battling? Are you ready? Are you ready to watch God do it? 
So when the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the pictures, they held the torches in their hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow, and they shouted a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. Then each stood in the place around the camp, and the entire Midianite army ran, crying out as they fled. Where were the two men that, that had dreamed the dream and the other one had interpreted? Why didn't they tell somebody, look, we shouldn't fight this battle because I dreamed it and I don't think it's going to turn out good in our favor. Where were they at? Then each man stood in their place and as the enemy ran, then Gideon's men blew the 300 trumpets. The Lord said the sword of the one million against the other, even throughout the whole army. And the army fled as far as Beth Shittah towards Zerara, as far as the border of Abel, Meholah, Batabah. Watch God do it. Do you understand when you fast, when you pray, when you praise and you worship and you stand for God and you walk in right relationship with him? God will fight battles that you don't even have to lift a hand in. He told him to blow the shofar and proclaim God and Gideon and proclaim the victory. And the enemy turned on each other and started killing each other. I don't know if y'all have watched the video where I told of how I had a lady that was coming and she was uh, supposed to be helping me take care of Corey. And as she came, I, one day God told me to play the shofar. Now, God had shown me this lady in a dream. And I was thinking, well, Lord, you're not showing me that there might be something wrong with this lady. But he was showing me that. And so then God had me start playing the shofar in my house. And one day she, I was playing it and I noticed that my computer was shut down. And I was thinking to myself, did this lady close my computer? And so... I came back and I turned the computer back on. I turned my shofar back on. And she asked me, she said, what is that? And I told her, it's the shofar. It's a horn. Don't you hear the horns? And she said, no, she heard people talking. That was the last time that lady was in my house. Okay. And that's because I often think about this story right here with Gideon. Whenever they blew the horn, did the Midianites hear somebody talking did they hear demons talking did they hear each other talking maybe thinking the other one was doing something against them and it made them turn on each other and so they turn on each other and started fighting each other y'all god has given us some powerful weapons and i'm gonna play the shofar for you and this is the shofar and this is what they blew when they went into that battle now i hear horns i don't know what you hear but whenever they blew the horn and they shouted the enemy turned on each other and began to fight each other the men of israel were summoned together from the tribes of naphtali and asher and manasseh and they pursued midian <coughs> excuse me so as the enemy was fleeing, some of them killed each other. Others started fleeing. So then they called the other tribes that were in the surrounding areas to come and help. So he started off with 300 people. The God says, this is the one that I want to go into this specific battle. And then as he, then he's going to call back in others. You, he may have you do the same thing. He may cut you down to several people. Just a few people. And then at that certain point in the battle, he's going to have you pull back in some reinforcements. Our God is awesome. Then Gideon sent messengers throughout the hill country of the tribe of Ephraim saying, Come down against the Midianites and take control of the waters before them, thereby cutting off the Midianites as far as Beth Barah and Jordan River. So all the men of Ephraim were assembled together and they took control of the waters as far as Beth Barah and the Jordan. Then the men of Ephraim took the two leaders of Midian, Oreb and Zeb, and they killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb. So they had a, a area, a rock that was named after him. Probably an area that they worshipped this man or whatever he was representing. 
And they killed Zeb at the wine press of Zeb and pursued Midian. And they brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon from across the Jordan. Their enemies were destroyed before them. Their enemies were destroyed before them. Their enemies were destroyed before them. God will allow you to see your enemies destroyed before them. All you have to do is walk back into covenant with him. Walk with him, live for him, speak his word, read his word, live his word, believe his word, take him at his word, and watch what he does for you. Watch what he does for you. Watch what he does for you. And then I go back a verse. We finished uh, chapter 7. But I wanted you to go back to the part in 24 and 25 where he told the Israelites, Ephraim, tribe of Ephraim, that to come and take control of the waters. Why? Because a lot of these people that they were fighting, there was a reason why they were gathered on the shore. It was a reason why they were gathered near the water or tried to get near the water. They had demons and gods, water demons, marine kingdom that they were worshiping, that they were gaining power from. So Gideon tells his other Israelite tribes to get to the water and block them from getting to that water so they don't draw up any more extra power, energy, or whatever from these demonic spirits. Uh-oh. So those of you that hear me and hear me talk about Marine Kingdom and like, what is she talking about? This stuff is within the Bible and we have not been taught about this stuff. But yet there are people that do voodoo and witchcraft, whatever. They know about the Marine Kingdom. They know about the Marine Demons. They know about Yemiyaya or Yamaya that they throw fruit and stuff into the water to worship them and they pray to them. And Gideon said, Get to the water. Take control of the waters. Take that area before they get there. And whoever's listening to me today, this may seem strange to you, but God is going to teach you through this word, probably through this YouTube channel, how we're going to take control of the waters. Let God take control back over his waters and cast all the water demons and whatever into a dry land. A lot of people that deal with witchcraft deal with water demons, the marine kingdom. A lot of seduction, Jezebel, um, it's a lot that goes on with the Marine Kingdom. Maybe too much to go into today, but just know you're going to hear more about it. And you see it right now. Gideon said, go and take control of the waters. Cut them off before they get to the water. So all the men of Ephraim were assembled together and they took control of the waters. As far as Beth Barah and the Jordan. This is warfare, y'all. And this is real stuff. If I hadn't been through some of the stuff that I've been through, I would not believe this stuff was real. I would not believe this stuff is real. <clears throat> you remember them calls? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this blessed word on today. Father God, as you call us into battle, send forth the ones that are ready for battle. We already know today that not everybody is ready for battle. Help our hearts and our spirits not to be offended. If some people don't fight the battle with us, it's okay. They're not ready. We understand that now. Forgive us when we had bad thoughts of bitterness against anybody who didn't stand in the battle with us. Forgive us, Lord, for those bad thoughts. For even any negative words that we might have said against them because they didn't stand in the battle with us. Forgive us on today and then bless them, Lord, so that their faith and their strength and their courage will be increased. So the next battle, they'll be ready. When their battle comes, they'll be ready. Father God, send the ones that will be aware of their surroundings in tune with the Spirit. That will value the water that you're placing in there, that they're placing in their hands. Allow us to be in the spiritual realm above our enemies. Let our enemies go lower and lower as we go higher and higher. Give us the words of encouragement at the right time to keep us encouraged, to keep us inspired. Let our enemies know who we are and who our God is. 
And if they choose that battle, then that's they're choosing their own defeat. Help us to understand that it doesn't matter how many enemies come against us, even if they're like locusts, Father God. 300 with you is more than enough. Me and you, us and you, is more than enough. Let our enemies be defeated. As we even play the, pl uh, play the show for right now, Father God. Let our enemies be confounded, confused, and scattered. Let them turn on each other right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we call the, the, the remnant that's supposed to rise up and come to battle. Let them arise. Let them come today. And then, Father God, we go and we take the waters. Father God, we cut off the enemies that they can't get to the water, can't pull any more demonic power, demonic activity from the waters, and we cast every demon devil in the water into dry land. King of glory, you are welcome here. Wherever our feet tread, wherever we go, the water, the coastline belongs to us. It's ours, Lord. You've given us authority and power over the birds of the air, the beasts of the field, and the sea creatures, the fish of the sea. And every demon and devil that represents. You are our God, and we're your people. Let our enemies be like Oreb and Zeb. Let them be cut off, Father God. Let the kings coming against us be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. Let the kings in our different territories be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. You are our God and we're your people. And that settles it all. Get to God. Get with God. And watch him do it. He's going to show you what's fighting you. He's going to show you how to fight it. And he's going to send you the, the right people to help you fight it. But you got to be willing to listen you got to be willing to follow his direction. you got to be willing to go. And then just like Gideon is training people to fight with him, I'm praying that you're being trained to fight with me. And me and you and God together, that's power, y'all. That's victory, y'all. That's battle to battle, victory to victory, glory to glory to glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> and I pray those prayers in Jesus' name, I pray. Mind control. Let's look at some terms from the Deliverance and Spiritual Warfare Manual. We're just about finished with this book. It's so beat up. My pages done fell apart. We're going to look at mind control. And we're almost finished with these terms, y'all. Spirits can control the mind and affect the way a person thinks. If evil spirits can control the thoughts, they can defeat the individual. I've had people do things to me. And the next day they don't remember like saying the words they said or uh, doing what they did. Um, I've had some of my husband's friends uh, that I've talked to and some of the younger friends that he has. And they could tell me how they went to the club and were drinking and they woke up in a hotel room with a woman and they know they had sex, uh-oh, but don't know how they got there and what they did. Don't even really know the person's name. That could be some mind control because why? The liquor that they indulged in or the drugs that you indulge in, that can control your mind and I'll actually open the door for spirits to come in and take control of you. A lot of people that have committed murders, they said something just took over me. I don't know what happened. Spirits can control the mind and affect the way a person thinks. If evil spirits can control the thoughts, they can defeat the individual. Mind control is a very important spirit in Satan's arsenal. People can receive mind control spirits through music. Watch the music that you're listening to. Rock, jazz, disco, and the like. Meditation reading certain books and remember meditation is not sitting in a room clearing your mind meditation should be on the word of god right reading certain books drugs and alcohol or anything that alters the mind and breaks down the hedges per ecclesiastes 10 and 18 10 and 8 passivity controlled by another person exposure of the mind to false teachings psychology pornography and so on. 
mind control mind control um i've heard about men that watch porn i'm always one researching something but men especially young men that watch porn they're saying that they're finding out that those men are showing more signs of impotence at a earlier age sexual dysfunction at an earlier age um men in the older age group that are having sexual dysfunction is more because of body function maybe medications or whatever but the younger guys that are having sexual dysfunction and it's harder for them to treat harder for the doctors and whatever to treat is because it's a mind thing as they watch porn their mind has become desensitized to sex certain things can only turn them on and if they're not getting that stimulation they cannot perform mind control a lot of men that engage in pornography to start engaging in the the riskier things can lead to rape can lead to incest can lead to molestation mind control can lead to pedophilia psychology think about that um we're taught that our dreams were just nothing just figments of our imagination um just what we ate for dinner last night coming back to bite us but now we know that there is more to dreams than what we were taught mind control mind control spirits can also be inherited they have tentacles and resemble creatures such as the octopus and squid we just talked about gideon telling the israelite armies to take control of the waters why because there are some demons the unclean spirits that resemble certain sea creatures and they act like those sea creatures uh oh migraine headaches are caused by mind control spirits there are a lot of people that have um migraine headaches uh oh you might need to really be investigated it may not just be a physical problem but a spiritual problem i, I can tell you honest to god truth how i would i would sometimes being around the wrong people would affect me physically like sometimes i could be around certain people and i would instantly get a headache i didn't understand it at the time was that person doing some type of witchcraft or whatever it may sound strange but my spirit would pick when i was around the wrong spirits i would instantly get a headache i didn't understand that first and then god began to reveal to me exactly what that was migraines are caused by my my control spirits mind control works with insanity mental illness schizophrenia intellectualism and a host of others that operate in the mind mind control also gives the person the ability to control the mind of another that's dangerous that's dangerous that's dangerous many pastors and church leaders have very powerful mind control spirits False teachers and cults are used mind control to keep people bound to them. Okay? So you need to pray over whatever church you're in. Pray over that pastor. Pray over whatever. Even ministry you're listening to. Pray whenever you listen to my videos. Okay? These spirits hate the anointing of the forehead with oil. And we're going to talk about oil in a little bit. And this is helpful in binding them. Also anointing the top, back, and sides of the head is sometimes necessary normally whenever i anoint my kids or my husband or myself i put oil on my hand and i rub my forehead and like my whole entire head sometimes i just don't do like right at my forehead and god also tells us what one of the weapons of uh warfare or the armor of god is what he tells us to put on our helmet protect your mind protect your thoughts when a person receives deliverance from mind control, they are able to think clearly and some for the first time in their lives. In attacking mind control, come against the tentacles by asking the Lord to send angels to sever them. This is real. I was under some serious um, attacks one time. And I didn't know that I had a real enemy. Uh-oh. And it was like every time I got close to an intersection and a uh, stoplight... It's like I forget where I was going. It was like something wanted me to not pay attention and get into a car accident. 
I'm just telling y'all some of the things I've been through. It may sound crazy, but I'm telling you, I lived through it. And I, show, I can tell you what God showed me through it. You might be experiencing some of what I'm saying, and you didn't realize that you had a real enemy that was attacking you. Now you know, now you can go and fight it the proper way. Let's look at the occult. Occult means something not revealed, secret, or mysterious. Occult involvement gives legal grounds for demons to operate. Please understand, and this may make somebody very upset. Sororities, fraternities, Eastern Star, Masons, Freemasons. They're all occultic in nature. Well, how dare you say that? Well, don't they have rituals? And don't they have secret signs and secret handshakes and secret things that you do that you're not supposed to tell anybody? Tell me where God told you to do this in the Bible. Tell me, show me. And I don't care if they do have a Bible on that stage whenever y'all are doing the rituals. You still are doing stuff that you're not supposed to be showing other people. That's occultic. That's hidden. Everything God puts in his Bible is revealed. There's nothing I'll be doing from the Bible that I can't show somebody else. Uh-oh. Past and present occult participation has to be renounced in order to receive deliverance. So if your granddaddy, great-granddaddy was a Freemason or your grandma was an Eastern star or your kids are in fraternities and sororities, that stuff had to be denounced, renounced, and it broken off the family. Occult participation includes fortune telling, palm reading, crystal ball gazing, card reading, tea leaves reading, handwriting analysis, occult games like Ouija board or Dungeons and Dragons, ESP, telepathy, Kabbalah, horoscopes, clairvoyance, voodoo, pendulums. It was a girl that used to be on Facebook and she would swing the pendulum, witchcraft, occult. Y'all just don't, uh, astrology or anything that predicts your future and advances your life. Re I even think, I uh, thank you, Father, for that. Remember those little balls, the black and white balls that we had that we would shake and we would ask the questions? That was a crystal ball. They gave that toy to children for us to play with and we didn't even realize it and that just came to my mind. That was a cult involvement. So we're going to pray about that today. Help us, Father. Readers, advisors. Going to the mediums, them psychics. No, that's occult participation. They're dealing with demons and devils, witches and warlocks. Magic practices and spiritism. Mediums and seances. Table tipping, levitation, necromancy, talking to the dead, even in your dreams. Communicating with the dead or spirit guides. Automatic handwriting. Uh, New York medium or Hollywood medium or Hollywood psychic. The little blonde head boy. Whenever he goes to those Hollywood celebrities, he go, gets a pen and a paper and he starts writing. That demon takes over him and he's writing, automatic writing. This stuff is playing out in front of you right on TV. Uh, what was that movie? Doctor. Oh, my goodness. What was that movie? It was just a movie that came out. Not too, It was dealing with the Avengers. But the doctor did all signs of witchcraft in his movie. I'll think about it probably by the end of this video. But it wasn't Doctor Who. It was Doctor somebody. Witchcraft. Harry Potter. Witchcraft. Divining, water witching, or dousing with four sticks or other objects for water, oil, and minerals. Occultic. Psychic powers. Hypnosis. Self-hypnosis. Self auras. Watch those people that say, oh, you have a beautiful aura. What are you dealing with? God don't talk about us, tell us to talk about auras. Metaphysic, trances, visions, dreams, superstitions. Certain visions and dreams are superstitions, okay? Superstition, of course, is witchcraft. Vision and dreams, God can give us visions and dreams. Occultic also, witchcraft, black magic, charms, good luck items, spells, Fetishes, um, certain bracelets and things people wear. Amulets, talismans, unks, A-N-K-H, magic, horoscopes, incantations, potions, sorcery, curses. Oh my goodness, there's another kid's show that comes on. Little Charmers. It's a kid's show. 
one of the little girls does spells by music one does spell by potions and one does spells by incantations or singing teaching the kids at a young age to go into the occultic to go into witchcraft materialization or port ghosts apparitions poltergeists healing through warts or burn charming do y'all remember the people that used to like if you burned your hand they would come and speak the fire out of your hand do y'all remember that i'm from the country and i remember if somebody got burned they would call this lady over and she would start speaking to the person's hand and you would see something come up didn't realize that was witchcraft y'all we've been around this stuff for years spiritualism psychics spirit of metaphysical healings rod or pendulum diagnosis acupuncture i've had some of the weirdest people come to my house and give me um suggestions of what to do to my husband take him for acupuncture take him um take him to the uh it was uh, <coughs> excuse me <coughs> i even had a hollywood producer call me want to do a show with my husband where this psychic tell, told me what my husband was able to think do y'all hear me last thing i want to touch on is oil and anointing before we pray oil represents the anointing the oil anointing destroys the yoke per isaiah 10 and 27. that means whatever's holding you bondage it can break with the anointing with the oil because the oil is representing the presence of God being there. That that item, that house, that person is set aside for God. Demons, especially witchcraft and mind control spirits, hate oil. Oil is also effective in dealing with the third eye. You know, we talked about that, binding the third eye. People say, oh, you're not awake. Open your third eye. Open your chakras. That's demonic spirits. Demonic. That's going into like witchcraft and dealing with like psychics and mediums and things of that nature. Anointing the forehead, the palms, even the home, window seals, bed linens, etc. is helpful in dealing with the evil spirits. And I touch my walls, I touch the windows, I touch everything in my house. I try to anoint my kids daily. The anointing of oil is also used to be used to heal. I can't talk. Excuse me, I can't talk. The anointing of oil is also to be used in healing the sick. James 5 and 14. I try to anoint my husband daily. He's had oil on him every day since September 2016. And he had oil on him prior to then too. Because I would try when I could to anoint him. Satan understands the anointing because he was an anointed cherub. Please understand the devil knows the weapons God has given us. And he doesn't want you to use them. Anoint from the Hebrew word mashak meaning to rub with oil anointing with oil and casting out demons work together do you have blessed oil do you need blessed oil you can um send me an email to i am faith manifested at gmail.com you can send me an email to i am faith manifested at gmail.com and i try to put that in the comment section and if you um email me your address i will send you a bottle of oil okay free of charge free of charge so it's important to anoint yourself even daily it's important to anoint your house maybe weekly if you have a lot of traffic people coming through anoint your kids anoint your vehicles anoint your land anoint where you work at your job nobody has don't do it in a way that um will cause you to get fired <coughs> excuse me um i went to a job one time and in the conference room all the seats had all stains on them and basically um this one particular lady felt like everybody in the in the in, uh, in management had demons or something in them so she came through prayer one night and poured oil in all the chairs. Needless to say, she did get fired. But just take a little bit of oil in your hand and touching like the walls or, you know, that wasn't, that wouldn't cause an issue. But pour oil in the chair, yeah, it would. Help us, Father. Let's pray consider, concerning the terms we just discussed. Mind control, occult, 
oil anointing. Father God, we thank you for the day. We thank you for your love, grace, and mercy. Your, your, your love, Father God. Your wisdom. Your word. Father God, anybody right now under the sound of my voice that's dealing with mind control spirits, let it be revealed right now. Let it be broken off their lives right now. Let the tentacles be severed right now by the fire of Jesus. Any witchcraft manipulation, any type of manipulation trying to keep your people under control where they can't think clearly, can't do what you call them to do, can't go and be in and everything that you said that they're supposed to go and be and do. Father God, let it be broken off their lives right now. Let the fire of God touch you right now. Let their heads be anointed right now with the oil of God, with, with the fire of God right now in the name of Jesus. Every mind control spirit of the octopus and squid be cast into a dry land now in the name of Jesus. Cause no more harm in the name of Jesus. Any false pastor, false church leader, false teacher, cult, or false prophet is trying to uh, keep the people under mind control. Let it be exposed and broken now in the name of Jesus. Any music, Father God, books that we've read, meditation, anything, Father God, is causing our minds to be not what you called it to be or supposed to be. Let it be exposed and broken off our lives right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let there be deliverance and healing today. Let migraine cease on today in the name of Jesus. Father God, expose anything that's occultic in our neighborhoods, in our families, in our marriages, in our generations, in our husbands, in us, in our children, Father God. That's not of you, Father God. Any uh, uh, sororities, fraternities, organizations, 3H, a 4H club, whatever, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, whatever, Father God, we've attached to, that's not of you. Father God, we repent of it right now. We renounce it right now in the name of Jesus. You are our God, and we are your people. You are our God, and we're your people. And we only walk in covenant with you. We break all covenants with anybody, anybody, anything else. Anything that I named out, the fortune telling, the palm reading, the crystal ball, the horoscopes, the clairvoyance, the voodoo, the magic practices, the psychic powers, the witchcraft, the black magic, the charms, the materialization, the ghosts. All this stuff be exposed in our lives now so we know who we're dealing with, what we're dealing with. And we renounce it on today. And then, Father God, let you anoint us on today. Father God, as we get our own oil and bless ourselves and bless our spouses and bless our children and bless our homes and bless our vehicle and bless our lands. Father God, let this blessing show that we are yours and you are ours. That nothing of the enemy can cross this barrier. That nothing of the enemy can cross this anointing. That nothing of the enemy, Father God, can touch us because you are our God and we're your people. Let those that are anointed be healed today. In the name of Jesus, you are our God and we are your people. And we're going to see with our own eyes. We're going to watch you do it. We're going to watch your promises fulfilled in our lives. And Father God, we say thank you. Thank you, thank you for choosing us for the battle. Thank you for choosing us to be worthy enough for battle. And Father God, we say we shall go. And we say thank you. And we say thank you. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, that is all that I have for you today. I hope this word was a blessing to you. I feel like I was a little bit everywhere, but I believe I brought the message home to you. Judges 7, watch God do it. Not everybody may go into battle with you. Don't get upset. They may not be ready. They may not have the faith in you. They may turn you back. So it's better for them to stop now before they turn you back. But trust and believe for everybody gone, God will give you a, the right 300, the right three, the right two, whoever that will stand their ground and fight with you and fight just as hard as you're fighting. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Glory be to God. Use the weapons God has given you. Walk in the battle strategies he's given you and watch what he does in your life. Watch your enemy be confused, confounded, and scattered. Watch the victory that he gives you. Watch the victory. And may every enemy that God has revealed against you, that, excuse me, let every enemy that God has revealed 
human enemy that God has revealed who you are to them and they still choose to fight you we pray for them today right now father god let their souls be saved let them give up this battle before your judgment comes to their homes anybody that was like the man that dreamed it and the man that interpreted and yet they still chose to go to battle open their eyes their hearts and their ears to you lord before it's too late open their minds to you lord before it's too late in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Well, this is all that I have for you today. Thank you for joining me. Continue to grow in God. Continue to grow in the word. Continue to grow in grace. Continue to grow in your faith. And as your faith increases, you shall see your faith manifested on this earth. Let's go to war, y'all. Let's battle. Let's join up. Let's link up like Gideon in the 300. And watch what God does. I love you. I'll be blessed. Join us tomorrow for Judges 8. This is Faith Manifested with Andrea. Have a blessed day.